Hello, this video will show how to perform a self-service migration of on-premises workloads to a VMware Cloud Director Cloud using VMware Cloud Director availability. Let's start with the deployment. It's a standard process of deploying an OVA file at the tenant's vCenter where we have to choose the correct file, give the virtual machine a meaningful name and select the compute resources, storage and network. To complete the deployment wizard, we need to provide some parameters required by VMware Cloud Director Availability on-premises appliance, such as root password, NTP server, hostname, IP address, gateway, DNS server and domain. With that, the deployment is done and we can power on the VMware Cloud Direct Availability appliance. The next thing to do is to pair the on-premises site to the provider's cloud. It is done in a few simple steps through the initial setup wizard. After the first login to the appliance, we should change the root password that we set during the deployment. After that, we start the wizard. At the first step, we need to enter the local lookup service address, SSO admin username and password. Then we give the site a meaningful name and a description. The last thing to do is provide the endpoint address of the provider's cloud and your org admin credentials. By selecting the allow access from cloud option, you allow the cloud provider and the org admins without authenticating to the on-premises site to discover on-premises workloads and replicate them to the cloud. By leaving this option deselected, only users authenticated to the on-premises VMware Cloud Director Availability Tenant Portal can configure new replications. We can also configure the local placement of virtual machines by completing the configure placement wizard. This is required for the cases when there will be cloud to on-premises replications. As a result, your site is successfully paired to the provider's cloud. You can verify that by visiting the system health menu. During the initial configuration of the VMware Cloud Director Availability on-premises appliance, the VMware Cloud Director Availability vSphere client plugin is registered. We can use this plugin or the VMware Cloud Director Availability tenant portal to perform the migration operations. In this case, we will use the plugin. From the vCenter menu, we select DRAS and then outgoing replications. Here we can create a new migration or protection as VMware Cloud Director Availability can be also used for DR. In this case, we will migrate a workload, so we click on New Migration. First, we need to authenticate with the ORC admin credentials given to us by the provider. They are the same that we used during the pairing process. Next, we select one or many VMs that will be migrated and specify the VDC and storage policy to be used at the destination site. We can delay the synchronization to make it outside of working hours, for example, exclude some of the disks that are not needed to reduce the synchronization time and save bandwidth, or use a seed VM if there is an older copy of this VM at the provider cloud site. By clicking Finish, our migration is now configured. A synchronization job is started and it will transfer the VM to the provider's cloud. Then if we don't start the migration right away, a sync will run every 24 hours to optimize the actual migration time. We can monitor the state of the job in real time. Once finished with the initial sync, there are some additional actions that we can perform before migrating the workload to the cloud. We can change the excluded or included disks, the owner of the VM or the storage policy that will be used. We can also modify the network settings of the VM for cases when they need to be different at the target cloud. A convenient option here is to use the automated layer 2 network stretch functionality of VMware Cloud Direct Availability that will allow you not to change the network settings of the migrated VM. But if we still need to change them, we can easily do that from the Network Settings menu. Here we can see two tabs, Migrate Failover and Test. After defining the new network settings, we can copy them to test and perform a test migration task using them. This way, we can ensure the migration will be successful before executing it and without affecting the source workload. Starting a test migration will let us choose if we want to power on the recovered VM and which network settings to use. Then we can pick up the recovery instance to be tested, the latest or an older one if we have multiple. And the test migration task is started.
After it is performed, we can see the change in the recovery state and also the VM is visible in VMware Cloud Director under the specified org. In the on-premises vCenter, the source VM is still running without any disruptions to its availability and performance. We can also clean up the migration test, which will power off the VM in the destination cloud and delete it in preparation for the actual migration. To run the migration, we need to select the workload and click Migrate. Then we specify the same settings as during the test migration, if we want to power on the VM at the destination cloud site, which network settings to use and whether to consolidate the VM disks, which will give better performance of the recovered VMs at the expense of the migration task taking longer time to complete. By clicking Finish, we start the migration job and we can monitor its progress in real time. When it completes, its state is changed to failed over, the migrated VM is available in VMware Cloud Director at the destination cloud site and it is powered on. The source VM is powered off at the source site. This is how easy it is to migrate your workloads to a provider's cloud. Thanks for watching.